Hello and welcome back to the Moment of Truth podcast. This is the show where I invite you to take a moment to reflect and be proud of how far that we have come as individuals and as a community, but also honest about where we still have to go in our growth as supporters and protectors of black trans power through personal testimony and honest conversation with community leaders we will recognize the power we all have lurking within ourselves to not only impact our lives in a positive way but also keep pushing black trans power forward I am your host, Junior Mint, and I am so excited to welcome you back. So let's just get straight on up into this gig, okay? But as per usual, you know we are about to start this off with a beautiful, beautiful affirmation. Again, if this is your first time doing this with us, these affirmations are to set our intentions, not only for our day, but for our life, because words are powerful things. And if we truly believe in the power of them, we need to be honing in on that power every single day to make sure that we are using all of the tools in our tool chest to make sure that we are trying to live the healthiest and most self-care centered life that we possibly can. So let's get into this affirmation. Repeat after me and say these words like you mean it, like you truly believe that these words have some power and they do. So get ready and repeat after me. Great things are happening to me every day. I just have to be open to seeing them in my life. I have all I need to make today a great day because I am enough. Enough to make myself happy and enough to accomplish anything that I set my mind to. I am happy and content with my life and the direction it's going in. And when I am not, I have the power to change that direction. And play that back as many times as you need in order for the message to truly sink in, okay? Because everything that I just said is 100% true about every single person's life. Society is not built to allow us or make it easy for us to see all of the great things that are happening in our lives every single day. Because if we all took heed of all the amazing things that's going on in our lives, we wouldn't necessarily feel so compelled to get the newest iPhone or the next device. And so, in my opinion, it's one of those things that ties into capitalism and your own mental health as I think so consistently about how as a kid growing up and even into high school and everything, the gratification of just getting like the newest object just to say you got it, the new iPhone back. Well, back then it was like, you know, the iPod, but before the iPod, I think it was the iPod Nano, but before the iPod touch and everything growing up in like the late 2000s, it was like to get that type of technology, it was a very just like gratifying moment to know that you could fit in and everything, which in my opinion is not doing anything good for anybody's mental health. So end of monologue, but the beginning of a new one. That's the beauty of a podcast. It's literally an hour long monologue. And I'm so excited to get into the next part of it, which, as you know, is the rose and the thorn. And this week has been a very, very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful week because, bitch, there's a lot of roses. I just found this amazing, amazing nail polish company that is black owned. It is called Minted, M-E-N-T-E-D. And they have some beautiful, beautiful like nail polish shades and I was like bitch you know what let me treat myself let me do this and I literally just before sitting down to record this right after I just finished recording with Shanita I realized that the package had just been delivered and I just did my nails and they look fire bitch let me just tell you right now gender euphoric my nails look stunning I went with two tones of like flesh like it's basically like a tone that's slightly lighter than my skin color than a shade that's slightly darker and I alternated on the nails and bitch they just look so stunning they look so stunning this is the first time I've done my nails and it just oh 
They look so good. And so that is a beautiful rose this week. Another beautiful rose is that I have gotten the amazing, amazing, amazing opportunity to just catch up with some people. Some random people FaceTimed me. Some other friends reached out to me. It was like, let's catch up. And I was like, okay. And it was actually a really really beautiful beautiful moment you know when you come out of depression and all of a sudden you're like oh my god yeah I don't feel like a burden to people I don't feel like a burden to talk to it's actually not so emotionally taxing on your own brain just to simply talk to people and it was so fucking fantastic to catch up so that was another positive but I would say that if it came down to a thorn it would have to be the snow and that would also have to be the biggest rose as well just simply because I think the snow allowed me the opportunity to one actually sit down and actually like put my brain to my work because I'm actually out of like the depression tunnel right now and so my mind is actually very very inspired right now and so I'm actually able to get a lot done and it's work that I'm actually proud of and I'm excited to share and so that was a very good thing but on top of it I've been snowed in and I couldn't even like go for a walk or nothing. That's the hardest part, honestly, is I realize this is the longest time since like the middle, the deep, deep, deep pandemic and like the highest death rates of New York times when I realized I didn't leave my apartment, like the walls of my apartment for like a good week. And so I'm just at a point now where I'm like, okay, I need to figure out how to go deal with this snow because I got a good pair of boots for it, but it's still just like everybody's leaving their dog poop in the snow. Just across the street, you got to like hop over a foot of like trenches of water because all the shoveling is just pushed it in the middle of the sidewalk or the crosswalk and it's just a mess. So it's just so many different levels of like, I deserve better treatment than this. You know, I don't deserve to slush through the snow and be frigid. So I'm like, let me figure out what my game plan is. And I'm a find a park, go for a walk. I always have to remind myself that going outside is so essential for my mental health. And I can oftentimes forget it, especially in this pandemic. And so, yeah, sometimes I'll just sit down and literally remind myself that like, Junior, you have not gone outside today. You need to go outside. You need to get some fresh air. Go see a person, even if that person is a barista, because there are so many times where I will turn around and realize that like the reason I feel so run down or so tired or whatever reason I'm not in the mood is because I have not left the apartment. And so it's very, very important for me and my mental sanity to get out there. So it's been really a moment of trying to grow in an uncomfortable situation in terms of like it's snowing outside and I know I really want to even just go outside for 15, 20 minutes. I can't. So it's like, okay, let's use this as something to be productive and find a way to excel in this time where like you can't go outside because it's a motherfucking blizzard. And so it actually has been kind of like a, a challenge. Yeah, I've kind of, yeah, I guess I've presented it to myself as a challenge and it's been actually very helpful. It's actually allowed me to, yeah, discover some new some new techniques of creating inspiration when not necessarily you, you you got it. And so, yeah, that's kind of like the rose and the thorn, which is basically the snow. I hope everyone's been doing good with it in terms of like simply having shelter or, you know, having heat. But as well on top of it, managing with like seasonal depression and as well on top of it, having to stay inside, it's difficult. So sending all of my love and all of my energy to you all to hopefully get through this time soon. So that way when spring hits, we can go outside with a mask on, of course, but go outside. Uh, Let us pray. So update, while literally recording this, I discovered exactly what my thorn for this week is. So I literally, today I just interviewed Shanita. I had a bunch of things to do today. All of them were fantastic and amazing, which is why this is probably the only reason this is the thorn, because this is the first thing this week that has gone completely awry. And I do possibly put it on mercury and retrograde but what it is is i am starving today and as i was saying i had a shit ton of things to do so 
I haven't really got to eat anything really substantial since this morning. And so literally I'm starving. I ordered the food. I was like, bitch, you're going to sit down. You're going to record the audio, edit it. It's going to be great. And then as I get to the end of recording this section and I was like, perfect. This is a perfect stopping point. Your food's almost here. The delivery person from Uber Eats just makes literally a left-hand turn a block before my block and the food is not here it said it was delivered I go downstairs I check it is not there and I'm like what's happening so I'm like bitch call see what's going on maybe there's some glitch in the matrix because you know it is mercury and retrograde and so I call And when I pick up, I'm like, hello. And he's like, hello. And I say, hi. On the app, it says that the food is delivered. And I went down and checked and it wasn't. And that's when he just like lets out a grunt. I don't know how else to describe what he said, which was just the grunt, which is like, ugh. And then hung up. And so now I am hungry. I am out the money that I ordered and I'm still waiting. Literally, mind you, another reason this is the thorn. I literally put the put in the got help thing on there to try to get them to like, you know, refund my money, send me some food, something, figure it out. And it told me to wait 10 more minutes because the delivery person may be trying to find me. I waited 10 more minutes and I got 10 minutes more hungry. And then I decided to put it in and now it just says processing. And I'm like, (sighs) it was very easy to take my money, but it's appearing not very easy to give it back to me. And so that is the thorn for this week. And I would say, honestly, thank you to the universe because they did give me an appropriate thorn for you all right in time for the recording. So look at the universe, look it out, look at them. Because if this is the biggest thorn again that I can actually say I have right now, then I am pretty blessed. So thank you, universe. And so let's hope I get my money back. But if by the time I finish like recording all the audio and putting together the whole episode i've gotten more food or like they have sent me more food or i've gotten a refund i'll let y'all know we'll see but in the meantime i am here to introduce a bad bitch an icon a legend someone who is truly truly a pillar of the brooklyn nightlife scene and now a soon-to-be legend of the West Coast nightlife scene as soon as the pandemic opens up because they literally were stranded on the West Coast. (laughs) And if that's not a bad bitch, I don't know what is. So, without further ado, I'm so honored and thankful to introduce someone who I respect greatly and who has entertained me on numerous occasions. And on every single one of those occasions, they have left my jaw on the ground and all of the money out of my wallet. So without further ado, give it up for the one and the only Shanita Bump. Hello, Shanita. I am so fucking excited to have you. I am so excited to sit down and talk to you. We are in for a wild ass discussion. Are you excited to be here? Bitch, I am so motherfucking excited to be here. I love you, Junior. Yes, I love you. The universe has put us in a place of being in the same space at the same time right now. And that is a blessing that I will never overlook. I love you and just know that literally like literally like the pandemic like responding to people like what I would normally easily respond to within seconds like it has taken me like days to get to a message and just like forgetting things it's not even like that I'm doing anything I'll be like at the crib doing not fucking shit <laughs> and I was like oh my god and I'll see like the reminders from people and I'm like I swear I'm not avoiding you guys like it's yes. so hard yes it this pandemic has really made me realize how many things i had to process and work through that was really stopping my own success and i hate i hate referencing that drag race show but it was my inner saboteur i'm not gonna lie because 
I just recently had like the most beautiful experience ever when I got to like go home for my grandmother's funeral and I got to actually get a bunch of things off my chest to my family that I've been waiting to. And it was standing in my truth in that moment that made me realize that like there was so much mental anguish going on in my life internally that was really showing itself in me not even caring about the things that I was actually passionate about, you know, like Mm -hmm. I found myself like just looking at messages and everything and just being like um, thinking about all the conversations that I would have to have in just responding to them and knowing I didn't have the mental energy for it. And it's so important, especially as black queer entertainers, like to take that time to yourself to take whatever space you need to process your own, like your own emotions and So my question for you, actually, my first question will be, what have you been doing to take care of your mental sanity? Make sure you are rested. Make sure you are taking care of Shanita. What have I been doing? Well, Mm. I've been sleeping a whole lot. I feel like this last, it's been, I guess, a year now, like this past year, I feel like I've touched up on like the sleep I've missed my entire years of sleeping. Like I did not know how much fucking tired I really was until the pandemic hit and like finally being able to just like get the rest that my body needs it's been really great and like not feeling bad about taking time to get rest either like that's a big thing too because I remember before all this like resting you like never always on the go no can't I feel bad about it but now like I'm like I don't give a fuck I'm gonna get out of bed at 5 p.m like what so sleeping and like accepting that I'm gonna be in bed all day has been my favorite and most helpful self care tip. Oh, there is nothing better than waking up without like setting an alarm. Like it, I can't even put it into words. And it's so easy, especially in the nightlife scene, to get to the point of like, well, who knows if there's going to be another gig? So I'm taking this gig. Who cares if I sleep? Exactly. I need to network. I need to make sure that I can keep paying rent. Yes, and it has, it's been so really, like, so reinvigorating to truly get to take time to myself. Because I think that there was like literally a few months where I was still. Something that I have realized is that I, as a nurturing, empathetic person, I consistently want to be kind of like a therapist to others or an ear for other people. And it took me a long time in this pandemic to realize that that is taxing on my own mental energy. And while it's not bad to do, which is like help other people and love other people, Mm -hmm. I have to remember my own mental energy. Yes. It has been, like, I can't even put it into, like, for the first time in, like, honestly, years, I knew what it was like to wake up without anxiety, without feeling like there is a brick on my chest. And Mm -hmm. I I just, it's so healing when you get to really, truly sit in who you are and have the time for who you are and not feel at all like I'm letting someone down by taking time to myself. And yeah, it's one of those things that truly I'm thankful for in this pandemic. I've been counting my blessings and the privilege of sitting and being with myself and also the privilege of sitting under a roof, period. I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, let me actually sit in the fact that as a black trans person who is doing drag as a form of paying their rent, which is actually happening, I'm like, Thank you, universe. And on top of it, <laughs> I've worked hard enough to earn a break. Yeah. We really have. Like, And I would say the same for you, though, Shanita. In my head, like, you're like a pillar of so many different communities, in my opinion. Like, Oh, my God. You, you span genres. You span venues you span boroughs you span like you span everything like i have seen you shine in so many capacities so tell me tell me shanita where would you say the beginnings of shanita began where is shanita from like shanita bump where how i like first got started i could imagine like most 
drag queens in New York is like when I first got to New York, I was doing the whole like club kid thing, like <laughs> going out to the parties that mm-hmm. my friends hosted, and I did that for like mm, a year, maybe two, and I was like, why am I doing this? I feel like this is like wasting my time and money and like what am i doing just getting in a luck to get fucked up and i was like mm, i could be making coin while doing this too because i'm not really too much of like a host personality like i don't have time to be like making sure everyone's okay and like doing that i'm a pisces so that would like stress me the fuck out oh go um, up and your birthday is coming up soon oh my god yeah yeah oh my god no don't remind me because this means we've been in this for like a year like lockdown uh mm. But, yeah, I just started performing because I was like, why the fuck am I in these clubs for these people for, like, free? Like, I should be getting paid to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. So then I just started performing because I needed coin. And I was like, "Mm, this is not enough just to go out. And that's that's where a little Shanita... Because, like, I wanted to perform before I moved to New York, but I, like, could... I didn't have really the... Mm -hmm platform or comfortability of doing it Mm -hmm. where i was from but um i didn't go right into it like definitely did that whole club kid thing like wearing these ridiculous looks just getting like (sighs) plastered out and what year what year did you come to new york i came to new york in 2016 that fall wow oh my god that's that's wild whoa 2016. But it doesn't seem like that long ago, but it seems so far away. Uh, like, I came here in 2017, and I'm like, it feels <gasps> like forever ago. Right? Because, like, so when you were doing Club Kid thing, did you have a day job? Like, well, if, did you have a day job? Of course. Like, we all got to make our coins somehow. Yeah, I had a day job. I had a day job well up until, like, um, a few months before I left New York is when I finally like went solo or just started performing and making my money off of that. Mm-hmm. But I, I did that for a few months before going on like tour to the West Coast. And then when I went on tour, that's when the pandemic happened. So I only had like been just supply like funding myself off of just performing for like a few months. Wow. But before that, like I had a job. I had the same job when I was in New York all the time. I worked at Gothic Renaissance. RIP, which is closing at the end of this month. It's I can't closing. believe it. Like, it's closing, bitch. That and Halloween Adventure. They're all by the same company. They're closing the end of February, and right now they got hella motherfucking sales going on. Sales? <laughs> bitch, we going down. We going down, and we about to get some steel. Because everything there, everything there is like prime. Did that also help with supplying things for your drag numbers, too? Oh, baby, that supplied, like, literally, like, me, whole entire drag. Um, Because I worked next door to, like, a Halloween store. Like, we're a sister store. So, like, I was able to get all of that Halloween and, like, stage makeup and costuming and anything. And then, like, the store I worked at, like, corsets, all that kind of stuff. Like, it's right in my possession. And I was able to, like, borrow anything I wanted in the store. So, like, I would always, like, Sometimes be stepping out in like a twelve hundred dollar headpiece. You never know. Like it just, I could be wearing body armor. Who knows? That <laughs> if so, I, that's called innovation because you literally turned looks without even having to spend <laughs> a dime. I'm so gagged right now. Well, how do you come up with how yeah. do you come up with your numbers? Because they are also things that, like I've seen you do like I can't say I've seen you really do the same number more than twice. Like and the only one I could even oh. say I remember seeing twice was the teeth number because I gag every time. Yes. Um, it's just I mean, it sounds really stupid, but like literally I feel like I can never ever since I started performing, I I don't listen to music the same. It's never to enjoy. It's always like what kind of what am i hearing from this like what what, i'm like haha this is this sounds like this this is stupid (laughs) do this and then i'm like okay that's a number like everything's so stupid but like listening to music is just not the same i'm always like listening for some like keyword or something that like give me give me something for this number Mm. so that's where they come from i feel like people always like think that there's like some deeper message and i'm like no all of this is like fun and stupid <laughs> yes if i had to like p- 
put into words like what your performances make me feel when I watch them. If I had to come up with like three words, it would always be fun, well thought out, as in like a hyphenate, like well thought out. And the third word I would say is probably, ooh, ooh, strong, strong. And strong because there is something that is very, what's the word? It's very, not only political, but amazingly powerful when a black queer performer owns their space and owns their body, especially on the stage. And you on that stage is like, it's it's just, it's like, it's pride. It is just full, unabashed ownership of your space, your body, your beauty, everything. Because it just, it makes me so happy when I, when I watch you perform because it is like, it, it, it feels like if we, ha- if there was a big drag house, we would be drag cousins. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. oh. The, does that beautiful, powerful ownership of your space and your body come rooted from somewhere? Or was that always just like who you were? Like, were you always just like, I'm owning this shit from the get up? Um, actually, no. I mean, in my head, yes, but no. <laughs> like, doing drag, like, has definitely made me, like, it forced me to be comfortable with my body, because I've always had body issues, and, like, so to say, like, but, like, being in drag, like, because I would be very close to naked, or wearing something I wouldn't feel comfortable, and, like, forced me to be comfortable in it, because I'm like, I have to wear this regardless like Mm -hmm. and just maybe like own up to like i don't know feeling more comfortable like in my body performing like if i didn't do drag that that wouldn't have happened because it it just puts you out there like it really just rips you even though you're like hiding and all of these like makeup and clothes and stuff but it really does just like expose you make you put yourself out there so i feel like drag really helped me just be able to feel comfortable and be able to express myself out loudly instead of inside. That like, that makes me so happy. That makes me so happy because it did the same thing for me. There's, there's very few, there's so few places of comfort and ease for black queer people in this world. And so I just, for me, I couldn't imagine my world if I had not come across drag because it just every sing uh, every single amazingly positive thing in my life every single amazing one that took me standing up and declaring who i am to myself even not necessarily knowing the words for who i am but drag has been that catalyst from me having to boldly say that I am gay and I'm proud of it to figuring out that my gender is not cis to figuring out that I'm just a full on amazing, beautiful woman to being able to vocalize that and being able to put it into words and being able to see every piece of myself as a strength is something that was very much ingrained in me as a kid from my mom. She was very much like, do you know your worth? But there is something about when you go out on your own in your own life and have to find those words for yourself and stand for yourself. And drag has done that for me. It is every single door that is open that I'm like, bitch, I feel like I'm excited about my future drag. It was just like agreeing with you. I'm like, drag is literally my whole world right now. And by saying I want to do drag for the rest of my life, it means I want to do something that's fluid, something that's going to change with me, grow with me. And not only Mm -hmm. me, but also my community. Because, oh, I freaking love every single person who I've gotten to truly deeply connect with through the drag community. It's something about being around people who see the world the same way as you. And it's definitely not everybody in the community. It's not everybody who does drag. But... (laughs) With people like you. People like you, yeah. You definitely like have your like like minded like family in the community and then you have people you're like, Okay, like you just don't get it. You you don't have the same struggles <laughs> and that's okay. But you don't get it. You can say you do but you don't. I love the way that you phrase that. You better that's going that's probably gonna be the promo clip. 
That's sickening. Where did you go to school? Did you go to school? I I went to school for like one semester. I could not afford that. Jealous. Day. That was expensive. I went to school in Ohio. I'm from Ohio. Not Ohio. Yes, Ohio. Not Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> I went to I went to school at Kent State. I actually went in there with um like not ha- undeclared a major because I went to that school because my best friend was going so I could be with my best friend because I just wanted to leave my hometown. Cool. Yeah, no, she graduated. She graduated. She ended up double majoring, all that bullshit. But um, I wow. I was like. Yeah, I'm just here because you're here. I just wanted to leave my hometown. <laughs> I'm obsessed. <laughs> and are you from the Midwest? I am. I'm literally from Ohio. Well, actually, what is it like to grow up in Ohio, actually? Because I'm trying to think about it. And I'm like, oh my God, that was awful. Hmm. Where I'm from, like, I'm from, like, this, like, small town. Like, my graduating class was, like, less than 200 people. And <clears throat> no. we had to wear, like, uniforms in high school. And it was just, like, it was really, it was an awful place. Uh, I, like, got out of there as soon as I could. Oh, the uniforms. Oh, my God. And that was before, like, I even, like, came out or knew I was gay. I should have known, though. I literally had, like, a fucking pixie gut <laughs> in, like, high school. Was, like, living my little closet of <laughs> gay life. Mm-hmm. I think it's so funny how to be, like, to be gay in high school, but also, like, not be out or, like, came to terms that I was gay. Like, I definitely was still, like, in denial because um, that's the time, like, in high school, like, my mom came out to me, and, like, I had, like, a gay mom, so I had to, like, deal with that in high school, which I didn't know that that was going to be a whole... Wow. That was, like, coming out, but not coming out. Like, having to, like, be, be a, ch- a gay child... Wait, a gay person's child? Is that how you yeah. say that? That was a, a whole other thing, so I feel like I had, like, a lot of self, like, hey, and didn't want to be gay in high school, but, like, I... It's so funny, because I'm, like, wow, I was definitely very obviously gay, and people were calling me out, and I was like, <laughs> no, you're lying. And now I'm like, wow, I was so gay. Wow. That bitch is new. Oh, my gosh. That's that that's going to be a whole, like, portion of the memoir when you write it, your memoir. Because I'm like, that must be so so many emotions to go through. Like, whoa. What, Shanita. Yeah, it, I never had, like, a coming out story because my my mom came out, so I just felt like I, I didn't need to. Or there was no point. And I was like, well, mm-hmm. what's the point? There's there's not going to be, like, anything there. She already, she's already out. What, you know, like, the, I don't know. Yeah, wow. You know what's funny? When I think back to my childhood, my mom, one of my mom's best friends, when, um, like, up until I was, like, 14, 13 I think and we had to no up until I was like 12 and we had to move because our house got foreclosed and everything literally one of her best friends was a trans woman named Miss Shakina who I was obsessed with we all loved her we all loved like Miss Shakina was a part of the family and sometimes I always 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 think back to her because luckily we did have the opportunity to like chat again over the phone she passed away like not too long ago but it was amazing for me to get to talk to her as like a person who like at the time was understanding my transness I didn't have the words for it but I just think back all the time and I think about her and how I just she I I think about how she saw me. She I know she had to have seen me. You know what I mean? Like, I can look at so many children now, and you can see the queer children. You can see the trans children. You can see it in them because you can really connect to it. And I wish that I still had the opportunity to talk to her because I would just love to talk to her about our experiences, our, like, coming to terms. Because on top of it, she was, like, she was married. Like, she had a husband. So for me, it was even, like, this depiction of this trans woman is, like, she has a husband, she has her house. Her husband was with her up until the day that she passed. Like, so I it's uh, one of those things that it always gets me emotional when I think about queer youth and trans youth and being young and those people around us who see it in us and who like identify the same way with us and 
getting mm-hmm. to have that queer elder look at you and get to have that conversation. And that's what I hope to do for my kids in the future. Because, like, oh. with how many kids I'm planning on having, I'm like, I know I'm not going, like, there better be there better be a shit ton of queer kids in this bunch. I'm going to be mad if there isn't. And so I'm like, right. I, can't, I can't wait to get to have that conversation with them when they're adults and get to be like, or like teens too and everything as kids and just be like, yeah, like it's so beautiful. I saw you. I saw you expressing this part of yourself when you were like a, a newborn, and then when you started to crawl, you started to do this. And so, yeah, uh, to uh, I'm just that's so cute. I love I love kids. I love babies. I love the fact that they are the Aww. exemplification of of opportunity and growth and love and they really yeah. Are. You'd be such mm-hmm. a cute mom. I'm so excited. Like when I tell you, uh, uh Mother when, Junior Mary. When I accomplish everything I'm gonna accomplish in this life, I can't wait because all, how badly I want a like community center that's like next door to where I live that I own and like operate and like my kids can go over there. My kids can help do the things. We running programs. We're like doing drag shows. We're doing talent shows. We're doing community building. We're doing all these things. And I've, yeah, I just, I've realized that I'm such a mother and all I want to do all of my life is mother. I want to mother myself. I want to mother my community. I want to mother the loved ones around me and just, yeah, keep growing. And I think that's a perfect segue to my next question for you. As you look at the growth of Shanita, when you look back at Shanita having come from Ohio, having grown, having experienced everything that you have experienced in life up until the point of right now, from clubs to bookings to now the West Coast, what do you Mm -hmm. see for Shanita? Not necessarily as like, well, if the pandemic works out, but like, what do you want for Shanita? What does Shanita see for Shanita? What does Shanita, Shanita Nita? Um, <laughs> I, I really want to slowly, like, <laughs> Shanita, you need a, um, I want to, <laughs> it's, it's so hard to like consider it, like thinking about like life. Oh, without the pandemic, because no matter what, my thoughts are now so focused within this bubble of what I can and can't do. So I'm going to just say it from that, because I, I, I have such a hard time even imagining, like, what I would do if it wasn't. But mm-hmm. I would I would like to, like, I want to start doing, like, short films and, like, making, like, horror films with my partner, because yes. now I have... I have, like, everything I need, like, all the tools and resources. Like, I have all of that and, like, someone else to do it with. Because, like, I love doing drag, but, like, doing digital videos, just, like, of a lip sync, like, it's a lot. Like, it's a lot. And some of them I'm not as more proud of. I'm just trying to get done to make a deadline or whatever. But, like, I want to actually, like, be able to, like, take the time out for Shanita not just to perform just to make the coin to pay the rent, but just to, like, mm. be able to perform because I love the art of, of doing drag. And, like, I want to be able to, like, make films because I feel like that would make that would make me focus. And I wouldn't have a deadline for it. Like, it would give me the freedom to do things mm-hmm. and not feel stressed and, like, really, like, be able to do my art. Yes. So I want to... I want to start doing some like films and I want to, I want to be able to perform like as if I already had like when I was performing, when I had a job, like that security of being Mm. like drag isn't, isn't my source of income Mm -hmm. because I feel like now that's my source of income, it's taken away from like what I truly love about doing drag. Like it's not that I'm in a place where I'm like, fuck drag i'm like no i'm I'm really tired and, and some of these aren't really worth it how it was when we used to get paid in real life yes. so and i just want to be able to like fall more in love with like i want to be able to fall in love with it again mm. i really love that 
I really love that because not only did that have so much beautiful reflection, but as well, that was like such a beautiful summation of not only what you see for Shanita in terms of artwork, but you, what you also see in in terms of your mental health and your passions. And that is literally such a healthy, healthy, healthy thing that you just said. I'm so happy to hear that because I fully, fully feel it. And that is fully exactly why, like, I did it a bunch in the beginning. It's up until, like, the moment July hit, I was like, I'm done with this, basically. Simply because, mm-hmm. I, I, to be real, I didn't get into drag to do three, four-minute-long music videos. And while I completely understand the art in it, that's not what makes me happy. That's not what, like... Yeah. And also, before we forget... For your um, movies that you're creating and for um, all of the sex work you want to do, what what type of genre are you envisioning? What type of porn are you envisioning? Because I do remember I've already um, witnessed the Resident Evil bloody zombie moment, and it's a gag, Mama. Mom, like, yeah, I'm like, you already know that we're going to be some whore flesh. Yes, yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. What is your girlfriend's Instagram and Twitter and everything to tag so that way everybody can follow her, yes. too? My mm-hmm. girlfriend Alyssa, her Twitter is I think it's uh, at Alyssa underscore eighteen A L L Y S A underscore E T A I N and I believe that's her her at exact at for Twitter and Instagram. I mean, if not, like she's definitely like. My Instagram and Twitter are Alyssa Stan accounts, so you will easily be able to find any of her socials. What do you believe Shanita <laughs> Bump's role is for herself, but then also for her community? So when it comes to how you view yourself and your role in your community, but also the role you have to serve to yourself, what would you say that it is? Um, the role I feel like I play to the community, I, I definitely, I don't know. I feel like I'm somewhere between someone's like cool ass auntie to someone's like bad ass, disgusting little brother. <laughs> like, I feel like it's both of those because I'm like, I don't know. Either way you want to be with me, it's going to be fun. I'm here for a little time with no responsibilities. Like it's just, we're just here to lollygag and yes. have fun yes. and i'm gonna take you there i'm gonna take you uh, there we're not gonna feel bad about anything we're yes. gonna do whatever we're gonna play dress up we're yes. gonna we're gonna throw pizza on the floor oh. we're gonna do whatever and truly is need but to mm-hmm. continue oh sorry oh um, no you and, continue and to myself like the role that i i think i'm like confused now but the role like i <laughs> Like to myself, like hmm, I think my drag character like is an outlet and like it's in hmm, I don't know how to explain this. Like important to me. Like it's like I need Shanita in order to be Brenna because like Shanita, like it's like a face. Like I want to be Shanita. I don't know what I'm saying. Ah! <laughs> I'm so no, I love so, it. Like, having a hard time placing it in the words because I'm like, maybe I haven't maybe recognized what I want that role for myself. I know the role, what I play for other people, mm-hmm. and like how it's important for like representation for other people to see mm-hmm. me for them, but like being the own my own representation for me to see like my first like me the first time ever in anything like it's still like kind of like trying to put a trying to discover that I guess like what that is Mm -hmm. for me because I know what it is for other people but like what is it for me (laughs) honestly it's it's I think that not necessarily having a solid definition for yourself is a beautiful thing and I think that when I think about the role that I like, like even drew your mint plays for me it's one that mm-hmm. holds me accountable if I 
if I had to say yeah. Junior did anything else for me, it would just be making sure that I hold myself accountable to who I actually am. Because I found that I will hold myself accountable for being true to who I am when I'm junior meant more times than when I'm just junior. And it's learning to take that accountability to say, no, junior, you are not accept. No, junior, you are not fine with people treating you this way. No, you're not fine with someone mm-hmm. doing this with your, with your time, with your energy or anything. Being able to draw the line for myself is something I can do so much easier as junior men than out of drag. But it's something that has finally been able yeah. to transfer over. And so, yeah, I, I feel you. And I think that the, I think the role that we play for ourselves at, in drag for our out of drag selves is one that constantly shifts and constantly changes. But as well, I do want to say that when it comes to your role in the community and you say fun and good time and joy, that is so important. And I can definitely say it is something that you so deeply provide because the space for black queer joy is so needed. So oftentimes we only get called when there's when they need to put on a sad face for a cause or something or another black trans person Mm -hmm. has died or someone's life has been taken. But for us to be also not only held in reverence and given a platform in times of tragedy, but also in times of joy. And it makes me so happy every time I get to see you because I get to see an unbridled black queer person standing up on the stage doing whatever the fuck they want to do and bringing joy to a room. And that is so necessary to not only mental sanity, but also just to a community in general, because I, yeah, just Mm -hmm. how I said, if like, if this was a drag house and we'd be cousins, it's like, we're both two sides of the exact same coin. We are a part of the exact yeah. same community. And I love I love everything you create, Shanita. Everything you create. People always want to say that I'm just... Because I, I think that what you do is such a powerful statement and such an amazing political statement on top of it. Everything that we do as Black queer people is a political statement because our lives are politicized. And it makes me happy to see you impact people in so many deep ways because I've as well heard people say that you have made people have breakthroughs. And so I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for you. You are an icon and a legend and a pillar of my community. And of course, on top of it, my circle of loved ones. And I want to say thank you so much for sitting down for this podcast. But on top of it, let these beautiful people know where they can follow you, where they can pay you where they can find you oh of course oh my god but first of all thank you so much for having me junior it's been such a delight to talk to you i forget how like how much like i missed you and like it's been so nice to like catch up and communicate with you and like i didn't realize how much we have like in common yes we're in the same we're at the same fucking like little family cookout <laughs> i so know cute. right but uh you can find Nick Janita bump you can find her on instagram at Shanita Bump, TikTok at Shanita Bump, Twitter at you need us, Shanita. And you know you can find her on Cash App. Shanita check. Yes, bitch. This photo. No. I I I'm gonna need more time to process. <laughs> Cause she did find her light. No, you you look sickening. You look like honestly. Really. I. I would lose it. I would literally lose it. Literally lose it. Oh my god. That's exact. That's oh, you just. That is literally the perfect way to finish this because, like, oh, Mariah, literally, oh, I, like, 
like oh my god if i ever meet mariah i'm pulling that photo up i'm pulling that photo up and being like you're an icon and you've touched my community more times than one you 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 need to book her next you need to book her next period 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 oh it's gonna happen it's gonna happen i know it oh my god <laughs> exactly exactly oh my god i love you shanita you are amazing thank you thank you oh thank you i love you oh I miss you too. Oh, Shanita, we'll be together soon. <laughs> oh, Sue, I cannot wait to get them back in. And honestly, it's it. The wildest part is I feel like the the old junior is gonna be coming back, but such a new junior is coming back too. So I'm like, I'm so excited to show everyone how I've grown. Hmm. Bitch, now, I, that's a thing that I actually really did. Know. It's a very weird thing for me to know that, like, no. <laughs> when I, t I'm not gonna lie, I literally had to jump to different dollar stores to try to get people with helium because they would run out whenever I would need to go. Like, literally, I would run stores out of helium because it'd be like, yeah, people would come by ever so often, every once in a while when they had a birthday or something. But I was the only person who would be at a dollar store every other motherfucking day being like, I need helium. I need helium. And I was actually, I was on the verge of investing in my own helium tank before a pandemic happened. And now I'm like, Catch me rolling up with my own helium tank to the gig. Watch. Watch. <laughs> you know, Maybe I'll start a helium company. Wow. Mm -hmm. I guarantee we're not full of hot air. The gag. It's just helium. <laughs> Take a Tums. <laughs> Please put that on a t-shirt. Is helium a gas? Please. I'm obsessed with you, Shanita. We did the thing. We killed it. <laughs> I love you so much. That was so much fun. I can't wait for this to come out. And that is the amazing, incomparable Shanita Bump. I am so thankful that I got to sit down with her and actually get to talk to her on a really, really deep level because we knew that we always had a connection from always performing together, but it was really beautiful to get to actually sit down and see how much we have in common and how many of our passions overlap because I can never put into words how amazing it is whenever I find another lamb, another lover of Mariah Carey, okay? It is... Uh, it's a connection I will always share with anyone who loves her as much as I do. Like, every single person in the Lamely is just heaven sent. But let's get into the final portion of this show. Because what we are about to go into is a segment that I like to call A Moment to Obsess. And I am going to go into three topics this week that I am absolutely obsessed with that I just can't keep to myself that I need you all to know about and the first thing is minted nail polish y'all when I tell you this coat is so beautiful and it really is holding up like when I tell you I am like obsessed with this nail polish I can't wait to like share it on Instagram because these are going to be the nails that I have for some things that I'm shooting soon that you will see and you will see exactly how sickening this minted nail polish is okay bitch and on top of it the second thing that I need to let you all know about is 
Mariah Carey and all of the music she is releasing out of that vault, okay? When I tell you, she is releasing all all of these amazing, amazing remixes. You heard me touch on it in the interview with Shanita, but when I tell you, these are amazing remixes, flips, plot twists of songs. Like, you have not lived until you've heard the Touch My Body dance remixes. Like, have you ever heard them? No. Have you ever heard We Belong Together remix? No. That's a shame. Have you heard any of the Japanese bonus tracks that Mariah Carey released that were only released in Japan that she is releasing now? No. Those are some fire songs. Like, when I tell you, go onto your Spotify title, Apple Music, whatever it is, Go under there, look up Mariah Carey, and go um, under EPs and singles, and you'll see all of them. There's, like, everything going all the way back to um, her original album. She's been re-releasing them, and she finally hit, um, like, all the late 2000s. Like, she even just... Actually, yeah, she just hit the 2010s, because she just released um, her Obsessed remix. Can you tell I can talk a lot about Mariah Carey? But as well, funny enough, that is the perfect segue. The third thing I'm obsessed with is No Name's Book Club. If you don't know No Name, No Name is this amazing, amazing, amazing rapper. She is fucking talented, but on top of it, all of the wisdom that she spits is so deeply profound and deeply of the moment. She is someone who truly puts pen to paper and speaks truth to power. She is someone who I think is 100% going to have such a lasting impact on hip-hop as a genre if she chooses to stay with it because honestly no name could literally do anything and i think that she would be amazing at and she has this book club that she runs and it of course has amazing amazing black authors and revolutionary thinkers included in them and it's something that i absolutely adore and i was thinking If you all like it, let me know. DM me, comment, whatever you want to do. Let me know if you would be interested in reading Mariah Carey's memoir together in terms of a book club where we like read a chapter a week or maybe a chapter a month. I don't know. We'll figure out something. But if you like it, we can definitely. Oh, maybe we'll do it through Zoom. Hmm. Maybe a Zoom Mariah book club. That could be it. Hmm. See, I'm coming up with ideas on the spot. That's extra ideas and extra content on this podcast. Y'all are hearing the real like primordial thoughts that I'm having and ideas because I have read her memoir already. I've reread it. I've highlighted. I've underlined. And so I'm like, honestly, I have enough to truly break this book down in terms of a book club. And I love it enough to dissect it. So I'm thinking maybe that might happen. Hmm. That'd be sickening. And it'd be an amazing way for me to share my love of Mariah Carey with you all because everybody should love Mariah Carey. And if you don't love Mariah Carey, I got some serious questions for you because how could you not love Anytime You Need a Friend, We Belong Together, Vision of Love, Touch My Body, Hero, like we, the list goes on and on. And so those are the three things I'm obsessed with and a fun idea that I just shared with you. Now, I'm sad to say we are at the end of another podcast, but as per usual, you will see me back here next Wednesday, and I'm so freaking excited to share with you who our guest is when you see them next week. I love revealing it for you because I was like, I could say it at the end of this, but then honestly, well, maybe... hmm. Maybe I'll try that next week. Maybe I'll tell you in advance next week. But I want to leave it as a surprise for you once you get to see the actual promo come out on Wednesday. Because the person I get to speak to next week is someone who I think from anyone that I've had on previously. And I'm very, very, very excited to have them on here and to have them speak their mind and to, yeah, get to share a piece of themselves. Because... As this podcast goes on, I'm only finding more and more of my footing and more and more excitement. And I already started off with a strong footing and a lot of excitement. So this podcast is only going onward and upward. And I will see you all next week. Thank you again for all of the love, all of the listening, and all of the sharing. Because without you all, this podcast wouldn't be anything. It would just be me talking to myself, which I already do by myself. (laughs) 
So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I just, yeah, I appreciate you all so much. And I will see you all back here next week for another rousing episode. And I'm going to try out something brand new with this new episode next week, too. And I can't wait to hear all your feedback for it. So thank you so much for all the love, the patience, and the listening. And I will see you next week. Bye.